everyone, thanks for joining us. Today we're going to be making Parmesan crusted pork chops. One of my favorites, I think I've got Bill and my daughter hooked on the new garlic Parmesan pork chops. So let's get started with the ingredients. We have these massive pork chops from Costco, of course. You'll need one cup of Parmesan cheese, two tablespoons of almond flour, two tablespoons of pepper, two tablespoons of garlic, one tablespoon of sea salt, two tablespoons of olive oil, three tablespoons of butter, one egg, and a half a teaspoon of paprika. We're gonna start by mixing them all together. We're gonna to use the egg for an egg wash and we'll get to that step in just a moment. We're gonna mix our dry ingredients together. So we've been doing keto for quite some time now, and this is a great keto meal for us. No breadcrumbs, which is why we're using the almond flour. Don't be afraid to season uh, your pork chops. I don't think you can over season that at all. A few of the tips that we've learned is to take your pork chops out of the refrigerator for approximately 30 minutes before you get started. This will help ensure that the outside is cooked evenly along with the inside. Now this is going to be a two-step process. We're going to sear it for three minutes on each side in a very hot pan and we'll be good to go before it goes into the oven. You know you should have washed those in Epsom. <laughs> Pork chops and applesauce. No applesauce, not on keto. If you're under 30, you didn't get that. <laughs> you can Google it or YouTube it. Pork chops and applesauce. Absolutely. That was Bobby Ray, wasn't it? I believe so. What are we having for dinner? Pork chops and applesauce. applesauce. Got to get that little right. tang in there. You want to make sure you're getting all sides very well coated. These are the largest pork chops I've ever seen. These are Costco, right? These are Costco. These, I think, end up being approximately 10 to 12 ounces per pork chop. Yes. Can I have, because we're always messing with our recipes, can I have whichever one you choose for me, and it doesn't matter, can I have mine double washed and double Parmesan? Of course. Just, and that way we'll see if it cooks different too. Absolutely. Doesn't matter to me which one it is. It's going to be two or three meals anyway. I could only eat half Third. of mine the last time I made it. Probably wasn't even half to be honest with you. Yeah, they're big. That would be two meals for me. One of those. Yeah, and this could be a disaster or it could be really cool. So... <laughs> But that's the fun part about cooking. We always just try and do different things. So now mine will be double battered. We'll see if that makes any difference in the cooking or just even the texture or anything. That's why I like to do it. Just got to try different things. Different things are good. I feel like I need to recoat it there. My fingers were a little wet and sticky from the egg. That's okay. We appreciate you. Aw, that's awesome. Look at that. Look at that. Nice. Now on to the searing. We're going to start with a very hot pan. I'm going to try not to jump. We're going to put our two tablespoons of olive oil in. And I have three tablespoons of butter. They're Done in smaller pats, just so it'll melt a little quicker. Ooh, that's hot. It's very hot. But that's what you want for the searing. Yes. I see my pork chop. These three pork chops are approximately two pounds worth of pork. That's crazy. 
There's mine. This one's Bill's. Because it's got extra. So about three minutes on each side, you said? Yes, sir. I'm going to set my timer. Now we wait. Now we wait. Don't move them. Now what about the oven? You're cooking these in the oven too, right? Yes. So I have my oven preheated at 350 degrees. These are extremely thick pork chops. They're probably about two inches each. So I'm going to put them in the oven for approximately 25 to 30 minutes. The last batch I made was 28 minutes and they turned out perfectly. They do still stay quite juicy and uh, it will vary a little bit. Your friend will be a meat thermometer. You want to go to approximately 145 to 165 degrees on the internal temperature, depending on how well you want your pork chop done. I, I think like the last mine. batch was 155 and it was medium and they yes. were perfect. They were still tender. Oh my gosh, they were good. They were. Again, I only ate about half of mine, not probably quite half. Bill and Lauren were able to eat theirs. I don't know how, but they did. And they said they were yummy. So I've changed the seasonings up a little bit on this set. I'm excited to try it. You for can my smell recommendation. The pepper. Absolutely. Bill's not afraid to season. Um, I felt like I was putting a little bit more than I should have, but probably not. No. When he does his meatballs, they are fantastic. And he just puts the right amount of seasoning and then some. So that's what I tried. I did really good. I didn't move them. We are at the three minute mark. So now it's time to turn them over. Let's see the turn. Oh, yes, that one was mine. No, that's not yours. Oh, never mind. That wasn't mine. <laughs> this one is yours. That's mine. Still looks good. All right, three more minutes. Here we go. They are done searing. Now we're going to take them out of the hot pan and put it into a baking dish. This is going to go into the oven at 350 degrees for approximately 25 to 30 minutes, depending on the thickness of your pork chop and how your oven cooks. Here we go. Oh, yeah. These are heavy. Into the oven they go. We're going to give that 25 to 30 minutes again at 350 degrees. We're going to check it approximately 25 minutes with our meat thermometer to see where we're at. Timer just went off for 25 minutes. It's time to pull the pork chops out. We're going to give it a quick temperature test to see where we're at. Sizzling. Okay. Let's see where we're at. Oh, one seventy. One seventy two. Oh. So guess what? They're These are done. done. Check another one for a heck of it, but that was the biggest one, so I would assume. Yep, we're 166, 167. Yeah, these are done. Okay, perfect. So. We're going to go ahead and let these rest for about five minutes, plate them, and then we're going to taste test them. We're back. We're back. Pork chop is cut. Pork chop is cut. And we're ready to taste it. And all the stuff that was in the pan, I said, I want that in a little bowl. Absolutely. So the juices are very flavorful. Um, the chicken. I'm going to, oh, that's a really big piece. Yeah. You said you cut it. Cut it into a big piece. So we're going to try this. And I actually like the juice from the pan, which is mainly just butter and stuff too. It is. So I Lots just wanted butter. a little extra juice. 
That's pretty good. I like the crust on this better with the cheese and more, more of the spices. Mm -hmm. That's really good. That's good. The smells have already brought our oldest daughter, Lauren, out. She can't wait to have some. To see what we're doing. Yeah, I guess when you get done with the pork chop too, you're supposed to let it rest three to five minutes. I guess all the juices go to the center. Yes. And if you cut it, it'll just dry the meat out because they'll just all spill out from the middle. Absolutely. So we let them sit for a little before we did this. Very good. Now these end up being just over 10 ounces each. So for me, like with my carb manager for keto, I probably cut it in half and eat five to six ounce. And then that way it's, you know, falls into my program a little easier. <laughs> That's a really big pork chop. It's a very big pork chop. The three of those pork chops, typically the recipe uh, with the mixture, you can do four pork chops. Uh, I still had an extra mix left with this one. I only did three because there's no way we're eating this all in one sitting. So... Um, yeah, that works fine. I know I'll probably have mine in three sittings. Bill and Lauren, probably Maybe at two. least two. Yeah. Maybe two. He's going back for seconds. He must enjoy it. I actually did enjoy it. So <laughs> it's funny. And it's fresh. It just came out of the oven. It's nice and hot. You can put the fresh juices on it. We're going to have the macros and the ingredients on our bonsaiketo.com. As well as in the description below. So if you dig this, give it a try. But you can have some delicious meals, still do keto, and still lose a lot of weight. Yes. Bill will put up a before and after picture. Yeah, if you're new here and you haven't seen us, I mean, we've been around for a while. Stacy's down, what, over 50 now, right? Yep. Yeah, and I'm at about the same point. So, uh, yeah, it's working out good. It's been pretty amazing. I started uh, approximately 22 women's pants. I'm now a size 8. Uh, almost a 2 extra large women's top and now I'm in a medium. Yep. Crazy. I started at 5X, 5 and 6X shirts, and I'm mm -hmm. in a 3X tall now. So we're getting there, slow but sure. I think the biggest thing for me was getting off all those medicines. Yes. I was on a ton, ton of medicine. I'm still on some, but just a work in progress. Well, hey guys, hopefully you like the pork chops. If you try this recipe, let us know in the description below, and uh, have a great day. Thanks, take care, bye. bye.